Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you for waking us up and allowing us to see and be in another day. Um, every last believer, born again believer on the face of the earth can agree with the fact that we all could have been gone and dead plenty times over. But your grace and your mercy has kept us here because we still have work to do. We have things that you have called and created us to do, Father God and revealing your glory to a lost and dying world. We just ask and pray, Father God, that as we share what you have for us to share today, Father God, that it would encourage, inspire, rebuke if needed, correct if needed, anybody and everybody that's on this journey that we call life for you, Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Let me try, I don't like the way this thing is. There we go, I'll try and put that up a little bit. Okay, today we'll be sharing, our ministry is Team Jesus USA, Team Jesus USA Church, Team Jesus International, and Hand of God Live, the platforms that we use and share the gospel from. This is our studio we use in Florida called Creation Station. This one just happens to be in Lantana, Florida. There is one in Wellington. And just one of the main branch. And if we can't book this one, we'll book those. All you got to have is a library card or driver's license, and they're free to use. So we do our midweek miracle sermon here, as well as our Sabbath word we record here, and then we upload that one for replay. And we share simply the gospel of Jesus Christ out of the King James Version of the Bible, is what we use. I'm saying all these things for a reason. Today we're going to be sharing... Since we've just moved here to Florida in August, full time, this will be where we launched from. In years past, and I'm going to be giving a little bit of history on the ministry, because I believe it's important that as your ministry grows, that you should give a state of the ministry and to share with people. And since the majority of my audience is online, I'm going to be sharing the state of the ministry and where we're at and what's going on and how things are going in the ministry. And I'm going to start from the very beginning and share um, how we came to be who we are, why we do what we do, the whole nine, the who, what, when, where, and how. So the Lord has placed it in my, my heart to share today. So we will be sharing scripture, obviously, because our ministry is based out of the scripture, obviously being called Team Jesus, and we use USA because we're in the USA. This basically just tells us where we at. The team talks about the fact that it's a body thing, Jesus, the body of Jesus Christ, or the team body, body of Jesus Christ, and then where we're located, USA. We do own Team Jesus International also, and we share internationally. We, we help um, international ministries. So Team Jesus International is ours also. But today, like I said, we'll be sharing the foundation of who we are and to understand through the Bible where it is when God had created man from the dust of the earth, which he said he did, and he told man to take dominion over the earth. The way we take dominion, first and foremost, is by sowing the word of the living God. When we sow the word, what happens is that we will reap what we have sown. Simply that. As we sow the word, those of us that accept their calling, as a minister or a preacher or anybody, evangelist, anybody who shares the gospel of Jesus Christ, we sow the word, and we sow the word where it's needed. Right now we're sowing in the Instagram Live, Facebook Live, um, TikTok, and as well as YouTube. We have, I have four cameras staring at me, and I'm sowing the word. And when God called me to the ministry, I was clueless as to what he wanted me to do. And it's no, not a mystery or, or, or odd thing that I was called because I was um, raised a, in a Christian family. Um, as long as I, far back as I can remember, born in 1969, my great-grandmother, who shaped my head, because that was before they put the little beanies on, your, on a baby's head, she, I, they told me my great-great-grandmother shaped my head. She, I'm pretty sure she was praying or laying hands on me when she was doing that being one of the oldest grandchildren in our family at that particular time. First, one of the first grandchildren born to my grandmother and then with my mother being the oldest sibling of my grandmother. So everything, when I look back on it, I can see how it was that God was engrafting 
another preacher into another generation of our family because our family has people who was ministers and preachers and missionaries in it. So it's not strange that I am who I am. It took me a while to realize that's what God has called and created me to do because as humans, we see stuff and we want to do what we see so often more so than what we're called and created to do. And it took me until I was 27 to submit to, to the purpose that God had for me to be on this earth. I, I recognized it and realized it at the age 23, but from the age 23 to the age 27 when I submitted, I ran. I ran from the responsibility of what I, what I believed that God was calling and creating me to do. So a little backdrop on the ministry because we're here to talk about Team Jesus USA or Team Jesus USA Church. Those are the two main functions of this ministry. Team Jesus USA is primarily the outreach of Team Jesus USA Church. A church is a, a, a fellowship assembly. We, we're out of Ephesians 4. Let me turn there real quick because I don't want to just talk and not give you word, but at the same time I want you to understand that this is, this is who we are, so I can talk about it without having to share a whole lot of text because who we are is based out of scripture and it's not we haven't deviated in 30 years so in Ephesians 4 very familiar passage of scripture we're going to start at chapter chapter 4 verse 11 and he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers this is why he gave them in verse 12 for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. How long till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statute, stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, in verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. So when God called me to the ministry, it was based off the fact that he would use me to do what he, he called and created me to do. That's what, and I'm going to talk about how Team Jesus got birthed. That's really what this recording is all about today. Um, I will say back in the early 90s, maybe 92, 93, um, me and about five of my preacher friends, Craig Gibson, Curtis Turner, Dwayne Lopes, Greg Joyner, we was all going to go to, we was all going to Great Tour Emmanuel, a church on Sinclair Road in Columbus, Ohio, to see Bishop T.D. Jakes, who was coming to preach there. So we all got together as young ministers for Christ and decided to go hear him preach. And so we was all, when he comes in town, especially back then, it would get really crowded. So we went all in, we was all sitting down in, on, on the pews, and we all sat together, it was maybe five or six of us, maybe, I can't remember the exact number, it's been since, like I said, since the early 90s. And we all were sitting there waiting for the service to start, you know, because we got there kind of early. And there was an elderly lady sitting behind us that I remember, it's, it, it's so foggy, but I'm going to share with you why I'm sharing this. And she tapped on my shoulder and I turned around. And she handed me this piece of paper right here. I have inside this frame. She handed me this piece of paper right here. And on this piece of paper it says, God is going to use you in his ministry to be a special servant to him. You may never see me again, but this prophecy shall fulfill your life. You are special to God, son. He will lead you, guide you, call you, God bless you. So that's what she handed me on a little piece of paper. And um, that was the confirmation. I had already accept, came back to the Lord as a born-again believer. But um, I didn't quite know how God was going to use me in his body in the kingdom of God. I, I didn't know if he was going to use me as a musician because I play drums or in a choir. I like singing or within the four walls at all. I, didn't, I had no idea what God was going to use me to do, but that was one thing I got. And I, I thought it was very special that I received that because out of all the five or six guys that I was with, 
she handed it to me. She could have handed it to any 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 one of the guys I was with, and it got handed to me. And so eventually I put it in this frame for two reasons. One, because it was special to me, and two, because I didn't want to lose it. <laughs> it's a little piece of paper, so you know it's easy to use a little, lose a little piece of paper like that, but it's not that easy to lose a frame, and I've kept on to it. And every time I get to a place in the ministry where we go through transition, I go back and read this, because this was my humble beginnings. This was a prophetic word. So I received a word from God before the service even started. An elderly mother had handed me that. And like I said, out of all the five or six guys that were sitting there, I felt so special to get handed, you know, that from a person who I believed that was sent from God. And so that put me in the mindset of realizing that not only was um, I going to be, I was going to be used by God, but it was confirmed by several others that I would be used by God to do something that he had called and created me to do. Now, this is very important because I was at a crossroads in my life where I had an opportunity to play professional sports. I was playing semi-professional sports, and an agent had approached me and gave me an opportunity to go to NFL Europe and play professional football, um, semi, yeah, professional football in that league, and then have a way to get to the combine to play in the NFL. And um, I had an opportunity. It was an opportunity. I was I was big enough. I was I wasn't hurt, so it was an opportunity. And then I was also an undefeated super heavyweight boxer. So I was at a crossroads in my life, and, and I had to make a decision, either to do what I believe God was calling and creating me to do, or to chase after childhood dreams and be a professional athlete. And because I'm sitting here and talking about this, I chose to give up the sports dreams, the sports aspirations and to follow what I believe God had called me to do. And in doing that, I also sought further direction from God as to who I was as a person. Because when you don't know who you are, so many people suffer from identity crisis. When you don't know who you are, who God called you to be, who you are, then you cannot be who God called you, to, what you called you to be. So many people, I know people who've been going to church for decades and decades and get decades, and they, they never understood who, who, they don't know who they are. Their, their identity is, is messed up. This is who God told me I was out of scripture based off my name. It says, you are my witnesses out of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. It says, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Now remember, this was given to me, and on here she said, the mother said, you are a special servant to God. So wording was really important because this connected with the Bible in confirmation. You are, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, in verse 11, and besides me there is no uh, no savior I have declared I have and have saved I have shown when there was no strange God among you therefore you are my witnesses saith the Lord that I am God yea before the day was I am he and there is none that can deliver out of my hand I will work and who shall let it thus saith the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down their nobles and their Chaldeans whose cry is in their ships. I am the Lord, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Verse 17. Which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army, and the power, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise, they are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. I'm going to stop right here. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers and in the desert. Now, that was special and important for me to understand and have that confirmation. For the simple fact that God, the way he would use me, I was also at a, a, so I 
came back to Christ fully at 23. Um, I ran from my calling when God called me to the ministry from the age 23 to 27. I submitted at 27 and uh, started being trained to be what I believe was believing God was calling me and creating me to do. As, as much as I love the church and the building, the singing, the choirs, everything that goes inside the church, God was calling me, I believe, to, to do things outside the four walls of the church. And this is where the, the testimony gets kind of interesting because at that time, it was 96, 97, a guy by the name of Fred Phillips, when I was at Apostolic Faith Temple, 1634 East Main Street, was having a, a, a tent meeting at Salvation Army's parking lot on Main Street. And he had called me, well, excuse me, let me go back. I, we was in church having services, and I was an armor bearer to the bishop. His bishop's office was right by the doors where you walk into the church. Anybody who went to that church knows what I'm talking about, explaining how the church is set up. So you got some out, outside doors, and as soon as you walk in the doors, soon, quickly to the right was bishop's office. So I was outside the office door waiting for bishop to come out to get ready to go into service, and I would escort him into service. And a guy walked into the church who I could tell didn't belong, didn't go to the church. You know, you know your church members. The church had over 200 members, but you know the church members. So he walked in, and of course I took notice of him. And I was like, can I help you? He says, the Lord wants to use you out there. And I'm like, out where? You know, because I had never done anything outside the four walls. He said, the Lord wants to use you out there. A little white guy named Fred Phillips. And I didn't know his name. He didn't tell me his name. Yes, is what he said. I said, um, what do you mean? He said, well, we're having a tent meeting down the street on Main Street, and I want you to show up. And I said, well, with all due respect, um, I'll ask my bishop if it's okay for me to be excused from the services that we had later on in the night and come down and see what you're talking about. And honestly, I thought bishop was going to say, um, no, because we got stuff going on here. We need you here. But literally, bishop said, yeah, you know, go, go see what God has for you. So um, I showed up where they had the tent set up in the parking lot. And this is my first time being outside of a church doing anything churchy. And when I walked up to the tent, parked my car, walked up to the tent, they were already in the midst of, of service. They were doing praise and worship. And they was about to lead on into the service. And it was like a really anointed service because they were already high in the spirit. We were just getting started. They were dancing and singing in their praise and worship. I walked up to the tent, walked up to the guy. His name, his name is Fred Phillips. He handed me the microphone and walked away. <laughs> First time I had ever been given a microphone in my life to do anything on the microphone. And I was like, what do you want me to do with this? And he says, do whatever God puts on your heart. And that was the very first time. I have the video of this. I have the video of this actual service that's going over because a, another guy named Robert Harris was recording a VHS, big old camcorder. He was recording the service. So I, I got a copy of the tape, and I actually have it. And this was so instrumental in me being called and chosen to do what God has called and created me to do. This is, to me, in my life, this is just as important as the call of Moses, the call of Abraham, the call of David, the call of J the way Joseph got used. All because if this is this is personal. This is who I, this is who God created me to be. Everybody always wonder how did Team Jesus come to be and this is how it started with me the individual god will give a person a vision for ministry he wants done and that person if they're faithful if, if they allow god to keep them they will be used to do what god has created them to do in one way or another and many are called and few are chosen so he has me the microphone i ministered on the microphone i just started singing with the people share words just start encouraging people there's some homeless folks there, and I got this whole videotape. You can go to YouTube and look for it. Um, I think I, it's entitled under Team Jesus USA. Search Team Jesus USA in YouTube, where we have over 6,000 videos. But type in after that Team Jesus USA and type in um, either Sean's Humble Beginning or Outreach Main Street. I got to remember how I have it titled. I'll try and put it in the comment section on these uh, lives. So that's how it started for me. And while I'm there ministering, the guy on the camera, whose name is Robert Harris, I know him because I ended up doing some t-shirt printing with him. He said, go team Jesus. <laughs> he, 
He, he says in the video, I have it. I have the recording. That's actually on my phone. I kept. I keep that. He says, "Go, Team Jesus." Now I didn't pay him no attention, obviously, because I'm up there on the microphone. He's holding the camcorder, maybe ten or twenty feet back. So after I hear it on the video, when I'm watching the playback, as soon as he said, "Go, Team Jesus," it resonated with my spirit and connected with me in a way no other words other than God talking to me had before. And as you can see, here it is. That was back in 1997. This is 2023 now. How important it is for when God speaks a word through somebody. Or Robert, Robert's not a minister. He's not a preacher. He's not a prophet. He's none of that stuff. He was a cameraman holding this camera saying, Go Team Jesus, watching us all work together at Winning Souls. And from him speaking that and me hearing it on the playback, when I was watching the playback, it resonated with me. And it still took from probably 96, 97 to 2001 before I registered that name in the state of Ohio for the ministries that we have to this day. Now, I'm not going to make this any longer than it has to be. So from, from 1996 all the way to 2000, I was being trained, cross-trained by bishops, pastors, apostles, evangelists, Lamont Glover, Gospel Fest community, so many different ministries I was serving. I, I put my hands to the plow. I wanted to be trained to do anything and everything that God wanted me to do. I did prison ministries. I did hospital hospice ministries. We did uh, food, obviously, did clothing. We did every children's ministries, feast. We did every kind of ministry you can possibly think of. And obviously my first team that was connected to Team Jesus USA was my, my children. At that time I had five, four children. And um, they were, they were, they was draped in Team Jesus clothes. I've always, I used to be an airbrush artist, so we did t-shirts. So we always had t-shirts. It was always uniform and clothes that said Team Jesus and we used it as a witness. The first holy roller, the vehicles that I drive, anybody know me, don't I drive a Vans and vehicles that say Team Jesus on it has stickers and bumpers and stuff all over it with scriptures. The very first one was donated to us. Nina Taylor from WVKO in Columbus, Ohio. People know her. Nina Taylor had a van that she wanted to donate to my ministry. And she donated it to me. It was just a regular old conversion van. So I took that conversion van and painted it and put Jesus saves on one side, put heaven or hell on the other side. Hand paint that van. That was the very first holy roller I ever had in 1998, and I hand painted that van uh, and put and put a mural of Jesus on the back, a uh, 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 a silhouette of him with his hands open on the back of it. I have pictures of the van. We ended up giving that van to another ministry years down the road, and we've had probably 20 holy rollers since then as daily drivers. So it's a lot of things that led us to where we are today, which is why we're sharing this today. So back to 1999, going into 2000, I was about to get ordained as a pastor. I was about to get confirmed as a pastor by Bishop William Craig from Christian Home Ministry Church, 86 South Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. So the Lord told me that he could um, confirm me as a pastor. But even after that, I still stayed under another pastor by the name of Pastor Fritz Lukinis, who had tools. He had trucks with a, a letdown stage on it that we traveled around the states sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and feed people. So even after I was confirmed as a pastor, I still stayed under pastors with my team because there was a team of myself, a lady by the name of Angela, um, a brother by the name of Jason, and... Um, my then wife, we traveled and we shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jason, ironically, was used. He was part of a ministry called Club Ark, but he felt the Lord leading, leading to come to our ministry, so he went from Club Ark and he joined our ministry. I had the, had the um, pleasure of baptizing Jason in water. Um, he got filled with the Holy Spirit. He uh, joined the ministry, Team Jesus. He's one of the founding members of Team Jesus. Um, and he um, ended up sowing the money, giving the money for us to register the names that we registered at that time in 2001. The names were House of Prayer for All Nations and Promised Land Complex. That was our church. Team Jesus USA. Team Jesus International. Gospel Outlet and Holy Rollers. It was five names that we registered with the state of Ohio. You can go to the state treasury site 
or the name site and see that to this day. So it's important that people understand how ministry started, how ministry has went, and how what ministry is now. The Bible says you are to know those that you labor with. And anybody, everybody who may see this video, whether it's now or how many ever years down the road, I want you to know how Team Jesus came to be and how we are now. I've always been the person God gave the vision to. I've always been a person God has, has had in a leadership position. We have had many come and many go. We have had, we're in the state of Florida now. This is a new place. So there's no acting members with me doing this work right now. There are those who have reached out to me with a desire to want to join. And they may or may not, so now that I'm here in Florida as a resident, because we just moved here a few months ago in August, and it's now October. So there will be people coming and joining. And what God has showed me and shared with me is that I need to share this with those who don't understand how, to, how long this ministry has been going on. And we have always been 100% donation. I have never taken a salary from the ministry. I've lived off of stipends. Basically, if I need something to eat, I eat. If I need gas, I put gas in the vehicle. But our ministry has always been 100% off of donations, and I've never taken a salary, a weekly or bi-weekly salary in any way, shape, or form in all the years that this ministry has been in operations. People say, well, how do you live? I live by faith. I just went and drove over 24 hours to Princeton, West Virginia to preach for Mercer Street Ministry at their outreach. And before I went, a brother by the name of Hayden Dawes that lives here gave me some money for gas. Um, and that, will, that, that enabled me to go and preach. And uh, when I preached, an uh, elderly man approached this thing and says, how do you live? I said, by faith, God provides. He says, well, the Lord spoke to me and told me to give you this. He gave me some money and I got back. <laughs> it's just that simple. People always ask, how do you live? How do you maintain? How do you do this? How do you do that? There are 16 children that I, I, I have had the pleasure of being a father to in one way or another. Seven biological, nine stepchildren. The last ones, are, are there's four with my current wife. We got married December 5th, 2022. She has four children. Now I'm a stepdad to the last four, which makes 16 total. The oldest is 16, 14, 13, and five years old. My wife is 39. I'm 54. Today is 10, 17, 2023. Team Jesus USA is still alive and kicking. Has been, and it's a God ordained, God anointed ministry that's completely and, and solely set out for soul winning. I don't get caught up in people's issues, their isms, their schisms. I don't get caught up in my own stuff. I'm focused 100,000% on saving souls. I was ministering to people before I came in here to record this sermon. They see the Team Jesus van, they see the Team Jesus shirt, and they have questions. They pull my TZ. They want help. And that's really all it's about. In the simplest form, this ministry was birthed from the beginning when that man came into that church back in 1996 or 7 and said, God wants to use you out there. It started that, and that's what, that's what began the process of me being outside the four walls. Yes, I do preach inside the church if, if need be, and I can. I spent years being trained as a church church guy. Every part of that, every aspect of the church from administration to music to church building to church growth, I've been a part of in one way or another for years. I was raised in that. But God called me out, and Team Jesus USA is the ministry he has given me, Team Jesus USA Church, Team Jesus International and a plethora, plethora of other ministries <laughs> that we do. So this is the state of the ministry. Right now we have two accounts for the ministry, and neither account has over a hundred and some dollars in it because we live by faith, not by sight. When we get money donated to us, it goes to the purpose of the reason for which it was donated. If somebody gives money for clothes, we get clothes for the homeless, we give them to the homeless. If we get clothes for food, we get food, we give stuff for the food. If we need money for a vehicle and God sends money, to get the vehicle or the van running, that's what we do. It's just really that simple. And I'm sharing this prophetically this day, 10, 17, 20, 23, because millions are about to come through this ministry. The Lord told us in his word, if you be faithful over a few things, I will make you ruler over many. It's been prophesied the exact same way this prophecy was given way back in the early 90s, 92, 93. The same way this prophecy spoke about me being used in ministry, excuse me, 
and I have been being used the same way that has happened this next phase is about to happen excuse me God's going to send in funds money for us to do the, the next phase of things that we need to do before he comes back which is in win souls we got a lot of plans for Florida a lot of things that we plan on doing and Florida is a bigger place with more population different languages of people so we're going to need different things. We need bigger things. Anybody know how we did things in Ohio and even a little bit in West Virginia? Because we, we was in Ohio. I was born in Bluefield, West Virginia in 1969. My mom moved us to Columbus, Ohio. And I was there from a child, uh, elementary school, all the way through high school to the age. And I, we moved from Ohio to West Virginia in 2015 and did ministry in, Ohio, in West Virginia and I will come to Florida in the winter time. And the way that happened, we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we end up in Florida in the first place. So we're primarily an outreach ministry, meaning we specialize on things outside the four walls. So I was praying and seeking God. I said, Lord, how is it that I can do outside ministries in the winter time in in Ohio when it's negative seven degrees or you know it's cold outside? You can't talk to people about Jesus when they're freezing. And so that, that, every year that was the issue for me because we had to put up all our tools for outreach and, and bring them out when it's spring. And so it got to the point where we was just, you know, we had our church services that we, we had a church. But, you know, that's, I'm an outside person. And so I prayed and prayed and prayed. And three opportunities opened up, one in Texas, one in California, and one in Florida. So I didn't know which door I was supposed to go in. So I prayed and fasted, preaching online in 2006. Online ministries got birthed in 2006 after I ordained the first pastor over our churches in Ohio. 2006 is when that happened. Have video of that too. We have video of everything. And um, a young lady here that was going to a church saw me preaching and said, have you ever thought about doing what you're doing in Ohio here in Florida? And I was like, no. She said, well, you know, we have an opportunity in a place where you can come and stay for a few days and come and pray and, and see if God desires for you to come and do this here in Florida. And so by me being obedient and going to online preaching, going to online preaching opened up a door for me to be able to come to Florida. And they gave me a car to use and a place to stay. And I drove to the beach. I got lost, so I just said, uh, punched in closest beach. Went to the beach and was walking on the beach praying and asking God, God, is this is, is this, if this is where you would like me to come and do ministry, I need some form of confirmation so I can be in your perfect will. I don't want to just be in your permissive will. I want to do what you're called and created me to do. So I'm walking down the beach just talking to, to God and a strange elderly lady walked up to me and said, can I pray with you? And I'm already praying, so she starts praying and she's saying stuff in the prayer that only God could have told her about me, the ministry, and the, and the that God desired for me to come here and do ministry. And so that was 20... That was October 2012 when that happened. And so I went back to Columbus after, after that divine appointment. I flew back to Ohio. 